Welcome to Cast. It's Friday. Normally we would do a video Friday, but we've got a very special guest hanging out with us today uh, that uh, we will be getting to shortly. But before I do that, as always, let me just run through and tell everybody, especially if we've got new folks in the chat or if people are jumping in and listening to this in the podcast format, we are the Training, Learning, and Development Community Conference Chat and Cast. What you're listening to or watching right now is the TLD Cast, and we gather every single day, Monday through Friday, 8 a.m. Pacific Time, 11 a.m. Eastern Time, 4 p.m. UK Time. Anybody uh, from the UK in the house yet? It looks like we have Ann in. Excellent. Good to see you, Ann. So that means we can get started because we can. Oh, Anthony here too. Fantastic. Yeah, we can't get started unless we have our uh, our full country, uh, all all of our countries represented. Well, at least a few of them, anyways. But anyways, let me get back on track. Uh, Craig would probably be pushing the shot caller button right about now. Uh, <laughs> but hit us up at tldc.us. Thanks, Kara. And also, if you are so inclined and you love hanging out with us and you're getting all sorts of value from everything that we do here at TLDC, be sure to uh, hit up uh, the membership page and become a full-time member of TLDC. TLDC.us slash membership is where you can find out all the information about how you can become a member of TLDC and all of the benefits that go along with that. So we. Um, we're working on, for 2018, many, many, many more members-only type casts and chats and sessions. So uh, feel free to uh, check those out. Talk to others who have become uh, members and uh, let them know. It's, um, it's something that we look towards our community for. We've got a special chat going in our Slack channel, by the way. There should be a link that you can drop in. Uh, Kara, I don't know if Craig, uh, Craig's probably got actual work to do today. Uh, oh, you're Craig and Kara today. <laughs> All right, excellent. Thanks, Kara. But, uh, anyways, yeah, hit up our Slack channel, um, to check it with us offline. If, uh, if you don't have the link or don't know how to find it, there you go. Thanks, Kara. And, uh, go ahead and get signed up there. That's free as well. TLD cast and TLD chat will always be free, uh, with the exception of those members only, elements that we add to it that we make um, specifically just for our members who go above and beyond and uh, help us out by becoming members of the community. What membership also gets you, which is the most amazing thing in the whole wide world, is a fantastic discount to the event coming up at the end of the month, TLDC18. Get more information at tldc18.com and check out why you should be in Arizona January 29th and 30th, 23 days away. And we are super, super excited about it. I've been re-engaging with our uh, set of speakers and everybody is very, very excited about being with us, especially because of what is it, the bomb cyclone or whatever is happening on the East Coast or across the country. All of you folks that are in the freezing cold and the ice storms and the craziness. In case you were wondering, it's a beautiful 70-ish, 70-somethings, low 70s, mid 70s in Arizona. Uh, some clouds yesterday, but they've cleared up. So today is a beautiful sunny day in Arizona, as kind of it always is. Uh, so if you want to get out of that nasty weather, uh, feel free to come hang out with us for a couple days in Arizona. You will not regret it. It's uh, Ari Arizona in January cannot be beat. But the other reason, um, the other sort of the downside of that is, is that this town gets very, very busy and very packed in January. And actually the first quarter of every year, January, February, March, uh, it gets to be pretty, uh, pretty crazy. So if you are going to come, be sure to book your hotels um, and, and get dialed in as soon as possible, because um, it does get really busy around here. That's kind of the fun of it, though. That's why we love uh, having made the decision to be in, uh, in the galvanized facility in January. And so there's going to be a lot of stuff going on downtown. 
uh, which is where the Galvanize is, and just a lot of great things happening in the area. If you come in early and you want to look for something to do on the weekend prior to the event, the event is a Monday and a Tuesday. So if you come in maybe on Friday or Saturday and you're looking for things to do, um, there is there there's just there's going to be a lot of um, a lot of stuff happening. You can even pre-plan a trip. Uh, up north, just a couple hours. Uh, you can, um, you know, hit up some of the small towns that are fun to hang out in. I tweeted one out this morning. If you're not following me on Twitter, you can check that out. Um, I know we've got some musicians in the group, but uh, if you're familiar with the band Tool, uh, the lead singer and the founder of that particular band, Maynard Keenan Haynes, I believe his name is, uh, started a winery in Arizona. And you'd be amazed at how fantastic the wines are coming out of Arizona, both Southern Arizona and <clears throat> Northern Arizona. So, um, yeah, easy, but um, definitely, definitely a cool thing. They have a tasting room as well up in a cool little ghost town called Jerome, uh, which is a ton of fun to go up there. If you have any interest in, uh, in checking that kind of thing out, let me know. I can send you all sorts of information, but if you just Google it, I'm sure you'll find it. Uh, Jerome is a fantastic little town just outside of Prescott, Cottonwood, the whole uh, area. So anyways, <clears throat> excuse me. Now I'm just rambling and Kara, you're not keeping me on track the way Craig does. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> we do have a great guest for you today. <laughs> Ray, thank you, Kara. I appreciate that. <laughs> Oh, yes. The Desert Museum is fantastic, too, Candace. The, yeah, down south in Tucson, the Arizona Desert Sonora Museum is just beautiful um, as well. A lot of cool stuff to check out here. Things that might think, ah, oh, they're kind of lame. We've got one of those in our state. We probably have a really, really, really cool, uh, a better one in uh, in Arizona. So um, anyways, uh, be sure to check it out and let us know if you, uh, if you if you need to find plans or if actually if you want to pair up with some folks that are going to be here and uh, go do a little group event on the weekend before the event starts, uh, let me know. I can help you guys set that stuff up. So anyways, let me jump over to our guest today. We have a fantastic guest. And you know what I forgot to do in the green room, Dan, is figure out how to pronounce <laughs> your last name. So I'm just going to guess Dan. There we Gekius. go. Perfect. You nailed it. <laughs> oh. He nails it. All right. I've been butchering names for a few weeks now. Last year was horrible. Uh, so uh, that's right. Nice to streak, get one your right. losing streak uh, is now over, it, right? So. In, the, in the new year. <laughs> yes, I'm feeling good. 2018 is treating me right already. Got to love it. So anyways, welcome to the show. Hey, Dan. Thanks for good having me. You. I appreciate, uh, you know, you have been, appreciate the chance to talk about uh, virtual live training with everybody. So thanks a lot. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So uh, tell everybody a little bit about who you are, what you do, and why, why you're engaged with virtual training. Yeah, so um, just as a little background for me, I started out my uh, my uh, training career way back in the in the 90s, probably when some of your uh, attendees weren't even born yet. Um, basically, started uh, doing uh, training back there in middle school. So I was a middle school teacher for a couple of years. Uh, they quickly drove me out of that uh, out of that business. Uh, I think due to insanity in some cases. Um, and uh, so then I moved over and did some technical, uh, basically technical training. Moved into kind of the computer training at that point. You know that was early on in the time. So basically, people were still figuring out how to use you know their mice and how to use Excel and Word. And so that's kind of how I moved into the technical side of it. Um, then I kind of progressed through that uh, at various levels from the, you know, going from more of the basic things uh, up through into networking and server training and, and more kind of the deep technical stuff um, and, uh, you know, Microsoft certified trainer, that kind of thing and, and doing all their classes. Um, so I did that for, I don't know, it must've been about uh, five, six years, something like that. And then I actually said, Hey, you know what? I need to kind of break that mold of, those who can't teach, right? So I decided to actually go in and become a system administrator. So I was a system administrator then for the University of North Carolina for five years um, for their College of Arts and Sciences team. So I, I kind of took a break from the learning and development side a little bit. Um, then once I got done with that, 
Uh, so I did that for five years. I decided, you know what, this is too stressful. So I, I needed to take a year off. So I took a year off, did some traveling around the world and came back and got back into the learning and development group with a, um, a, data, a data company uh, that's based uh, in Sunnyvale and was in their learning and development team there for about 10 years. Um, with that group, I did everything from uh, basically writing content, building content, um, working with SMEs, facilitating, actually did their, some of their first uh, virtual classes uh, at that point in time years back. Uh, was with them for about 10 years and then recently just moved over into Lenovo in the last uh, about year and a half. Um, and that's where kind of my play came in with AirClass where um, I was in the learning and development group with Lenovo, uh, working with the sales teams. Uh, and then basically they needed somebody to come in and give them some feedback on AirClass, their virtual live training platform. And I came in, did that, and really liked the team and liked the the product. And so I jumped ship and moved over into their class. So that's my that's my little synopsis. That's fantastic. Yeah, we've been calling those origin <laughs> stories, and it sounds like yours is is very familiar to some folks in our crowd. So it's uh, I know it's um, it's it's not an uncommon path for people in our industry that uh, to to start off their careers teaching, but wow, middle school. Yeah. This I I've got three kids and I can remember, um, being a, a youth leader for middle school kids, uh, just while I was in college and, uh, yeah, middle school's tough, tough. They'll, they'll, they'll drive you <laughs> into another career. Well, sure. you know, And the problem was, <laughs> is I, I enjoyed the kids and I had a great time doing it. And, uh, my problem was, I think I, I was lacking some of the disciplinary uh, needs that were that were in that situation. And so what happened is, uh, you know, it ended up where the kids and I were having too much fun. And I think it just got to be the point of like, hey, this is, uh, you know, long term, I'm going to have to think about something different. So I decided to go with adults where adults don't want to have fun. Yeah, yeah we're, we're going to have to be learning something. <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> yeah. So I figured since adults really usually don't want to learn anything and they're unhappy, then my energy and their energy will balance each other out and will be in good shape. There you go. Yeah, that's uh, that's the best part, right? I the way I always figure it is is that and if you can survive teaching middle school, man, you can teach anything and you can you can hang with adult education anytime. Uh, it's a, a a lot of times it's uh, even more complicated with the adults. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> As crazy as it is, as crazy as middle schoolers are with all the, the uh, hormones and all that, right. uh, yeah, it's uh, sometimes adults are worse. <laughs> you know, it's, it's a good training ground. They're, Maybe that's what we should do for our for our our, our future certifications. We should require that everybody <laughs> be a middle. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah, it, it's like basic training. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, I think that would be that would be a good idea. And I think it would also uh, it would help to fund our schools a lot more if everybody had to go through a couple of years in middle school, you know, teaching that. It'd right, be like, hey, right? we need to get that. Yeah, I think people, down. people would show a lot more respect <laughs> to the profession, I think. <laughs> you do that a couple of years, you know, you get a little oh, shell shock. Man. Yeah, yeah, for sure. For sure. <laughs> Well, listen, let's, uh, gosh darn it, we could probably just chat about that kind of stuff all day long, but uh, let's jump into some of the um, the questions and see. Oh, I forgot um, part of my list, rats. I forgot to tell everybody. Click the share button and tell everybody we're having a great conversation here. The share button will let you um, share the link out to Twitter, LinkedIn, all that kind of good stuff. Yes, Joe, thank you so much. Share, share, share. It's a great way for you to uh, help us spread the word and, uh, you know what, share the love with your friends. You know, you can't just hang out in here and hoard all the free learning and the free professional development to yourself. So uh, spread the love, bring a friend and uh, hit that share button, but also vote up some of these questions. And if you've got um, very other very specific questions for Dan today, feel free to put them into the um, into the question and answers section and get those voted up. So uh, the first question here right out the shoot is what are the common issues you see with companies that are moving into a virtual live delivery format? Love that question. Yeah. Yeah. Excuse me. Um, I was, I was busy sharing out the, uh, sharing out the link. So yeah. Um, yeah, do it. I mean, no worries. Take, yeah. Take your time. It's good. Excuse me. And I'm also fighting over a cold. So if I have to stop to, uh, 
to uh, cough a couple times. Uh, excuse me for that. Yeah, the common issues that you see mm -hmm. when with companies that are moving into the virtual live format. Um, you know, that's a that's a good question. And I, the nice thing about the the role I'm in now, I get a chance to talk to a lot of different companies um, about what they're doing in virtual space, um, how they're moving forward, kind of what their plans are, what their strategies are. Um, I would say, you know, some when we look at some of the common issues that they have is one is that they feel like they're getting forced into the virtual live format, right? You know, their budgets are getting kind of crunched down a little bit. People are getting restricted on travel, right? And so they're kind of like, they're not able to um, kind of keep doing the things that the way that they have been. And so they're saying, well, yeah, now my budget just got cut by whatever, $500,000. How do I cover that and still provide the training? And so I'm forced into going to virtual. So the, the downside is, is, is that kind of sets a mindset for our learners, uh, and I should say learning and development teams, that this is a step backwards, right? That this is not really a step forward to improving the way that we deliver content to students, but actually is just the opposite. And we're getting something taken away because we can no longer do face-to-face -face stuff. And, and I think we really need to work hard, you know, myself included, anybody who's in the virtual live training uh, environment, we have to work hard to make sure that mindset doesn't get locked in. Because I think we're at a point now um, where uh, the quality of our, our training tools, um, we have a better understanding of how content should be developed, we have a better understanding of how people want to consume virtual live training. And so we have the, the opportunity now to really almost get to a point where what we do virtually is as impactful, if not more impactful than sometimes what we do in the classroom. And so, you know, I think one of the big problems is, yeah, that budget's getting crunched, people are kind of getting forced into it, and it's giving them a negative mindset. Um, you know, that's that would be one of the main things I would say. When we look at some of the other stuff is the other problem that a company runs into is they're getting to that point where, hey, yeah, we're gonna go virtual. You know, it's like, we gotta save money, we're gonna go virtual. So what do they do? They take that three-day class that they might have been, you know, doing face-to-face -face that had kind of set breaks and labs and, you know, was, yeah, yeah, exactly, <laughs> food, and, you know, and it was like people could get up, leave whenever they wanted and come back, nobody really cared. You know, they take that and they say, hey, you know what, we're going to do that same thing over three days in a virtual environment. And it's like, you know, that mindset, I think, is one of the things that's really kind of hurting the quality of our virtual yeah. live training. Yeah. You know, because oh, go ahead. yeah, for sure. I think that's those design elements, right? I mean, you, you really do have to take a look at the content over again. You have to take a look at the audience, and you really have to start thinking about okay, this is you know maybe the content is the same and and whatnot, and and it it's you know still needs to be learned, but the format and the delivery may adjusted to to match that, yep. and I it does. I I think. I think more than anything, and this is probably where a lot of the frustrations lie, is that um, instructors have gotten so used to being in the classroom and they know what to expect and they know how to manage the room and the space and everything. And then when they get into sort of a, a, a live virtual environment, they're not exactly sure how to handle the same situations they think that they can just do what they do in the classroom and then it, it all starts to go wrong and they start to lose people and they feel uncomfortable looking into the camera yeah. you know like we were talking yeah. about earlier and that kind of stuff i mean all all of the different issues that you have to confront that really are design issues that if you have to take a look at how you do it a little bit differently and on on the learner's side what i've discovered is that um, not only learners, but managers of groups that are taking virtual classes need to respect that time a little bit more. It's so much easier for people to say, oh yeah, I'm just doing this online virtual class. And so it's easy for them to just kind of cancel or it's easy for a manager to poke their head in their cube and say, hey, I know you're doing this virtual class, but can you just do this one thing for me real yeah. quick kind of thing? And I, I think there needs, I think part of the design needs to be blocking, teaching people how to block that time in the same way that you would leave your cubicle or whatever and yep. go to a classroom. You need to be that diligent about blocking the time, blocking the cubicle or go and take the virtual classroom like in a conference room or, or you know, be very 
diligent about making sure that you utilize and you put as much seriousness on that time for the virtual class that you would going yeah. and sitting in the class. Yeah, I totally agree with that. And that's and that's something, you know, another part that I that I kind of play with when I talk about what we need to do to really improve virtual live training is I usually hit on three things. It's it's uh, engagement of the student, right? And it's in, it's making sure that we're getting feedback to the instructors and then also the development of content. And I think I think content, you know, and and we learned this in face to face years ago, right? Content is is king in some cases. If you build and you design and create a, a good face to face yeah. class, you can give it to a, a instructor that might not be the best instructor you have, and it'll still be a great class. And I think you know we we have to do the same thing with virtual live activities, right? Um, and the idea that the yep. idea that we have to kind of also change the mindset, kind of to your point that hey. When you're taking a virtual live class, be as involved as you are in a regular class where you're sitting there, right? And it's we have to break the mindset because now everybody's so used to webinars, right? And everything that we've gotten yeah. has been told to us, oh, yeah, it's a virtual live training. And we go to the virtual live training. There's no interaction, right? Nobody's, nobody's asking me a question. Yeah. Nobody's doing anything. I'm sitting there listening to something. And it's like, well, this is a webinar. And, and we need to make sure that as in as learning and development people we're separating the difference between a webinar and an actual virtual live training event um, because the way those two things run are completely completely different and the expectation of the outcomes of each of those should be completely different also yeah you know and, and that that leads me to a question i definitely wanted to ask it's been kind of in the back of my mind and i've noticed that candace and you know, asks a similar question, and you you may or may not know this answer specifically, but you know, we've all we've got we've had a lot of these tools. We have a lot of these tools, yeah. right? There's Adobe Connect, there's, there's WebEx, there's all these other tools that are out there. <laughs> and, and any any and well, that's what I was just gonna say. Any idea why they decided there needs to be another tool into yeah. in the mix, right? And and kind of you know what's what's your messaging around that? And don't be afraid to talk about yeah, the product. Yeah, no, I it's think okay. um, I think I think when when they started looking at it, they said, hey, there's a there's a need in the training and learning uh, learning and development space to actually have a tool that's more effective than what we're using for webinars, right? We we don't. What we got used to, I think, for the learning and development uh, arena is, hey, you know, we already have, you know, whatever it might be, you know, this conferencing tool. Let's just go ahead and that's what we're going to use for our training, right? Because it's cheap. It's there. We already yeah. know how to use it. Boom. Let's go with that. IT exactly. already paid for it, so you're not going to be able to get any budget right. for another one. That's that's the, a lot of the yeah. pushback yep. within Absolutely. corporate, right? You know, and there was definitely, I mean, you know, Adobe Connect is, is one of the... Uh, uh, companies out there that basically kind of was leading the way with with actually building a tool that was focused on on learning and development. And I think a couple of the other companies have kind of you know come in behind that with some of their other add-on features. But what we found is nobody really built yep. a program, nobody really built a piece of software specifically for learning and development. And that's where that's what AirClass did, right? So they came in and they said, okay, we're not going to be a web conferencing tool. We're not going to be some, a web conferencing tool that has an add-on for training. Let's go ahead and build specifically for, um, you know, the learning and development group. So, like, one of the things we considered that a lot of things, you know, that are kind of when you talk to customers are like, that's very interesting, is, you know, the idea of a persistent classroom, right? So, what just like you would in, in a brick-and-mortar yep. place where you have a classroom, people can come into the classroom when the instructor's not there, they can basically, you know, look around at the room, see what handouts are on there, read the books, whatever the case may be. You know, we kind of built that same concept. Yeah, Meet yeah, exactly. You know, make it more social, things like that. So we kind of took that same concept and uh, we have a, a situation where you can basically have all your content set up ahead of time. You can come in, students can interact. They can look at uh you know, materials, you might want to have them available first, you know, videos, whatever, you know, so you can do all that. So, you know, um, and then it's available for the live event, that same room. And then that same room is available after the live event's done as a recording and to continue the social, um, the social aspect of it. So, you know, when you look at it, it's built, we tried to take what you do in brick and mortar and we say, okay, let's see how close we can get to that within a virtual live space. So that's just kind of a little bit of why, you know, AirClass even came about. 
Yeah, it's great. And it, it's a, I, I was curious how, <clears throat> how you might answer the question because I've often said like tools like, like, like Crowdcast, mm -hmm. like what we're using here. And, and I can remember when um, in the early days of the live streaming, um, there was a tool called Blab. Were you into that at all? Um, Do you remember yeah, Blab.io? I'm, I'm not familiar with that, no. No, that's a, that's okay. Not many people are. It kind of came and went. Uh, it was a trendy thing for a while, but it really um, it utilized the you know the new open web uh, web TC web RTC, format, yeah. I guess, yeah. or whatever it is that yeah that 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 drives a lot of this. And um, you know, I remember thinking this is the future. It's so much easier to hit up a web browser and boom, boom, click on the video, and you're there, right? I mean, I, I still like to this day. Every time I get invited to a WebEx or a Go to meeting, I just, I, my heart sinks because I'm like, God, now I gotta, you gotta dial in like 800 different numbers, and you gotta push in a bunch of things, and then you gotta sign into you know, three or four different plugins have to launch and the, you know, your browser crashes or it's the wrong one or, you know, I mean, it's just, it's this epic pain. And when, the, when the new format came out and, and things like this came around, I was like, Oh my gosh, this is fantastic. It just makes everything so much easier. I send the link, someone goes there. I mean, you know, the worst technical problems people run into is I can't get my headset to right. be recognized by my yeah. browser or whatever. And that normally just takes a couple clicks, yeah. boom, you're good to go. Yeah. And I think that's a, that's an interesting point. Um, Cause one of the other things, you know, that, that we talk about is, or one of the questions that comes up is like, where are we at on that, on that virtual live training curve? You know, are we, are we already, you know, up towards the top of it? Is it kind of as good as it's going to get at this point? And and I think the answer to that is absolutely not, right? I I feel like we're we're just on the yeah. start of that curve. Um, and what happens is, yep. you know, every year technology moves, kind of flattens that curve out for us, right? You know, so technology improves. I mean, yep. think about it, another five, ten years, we're going to be. It's going to be if you're not if you probably don't have augmented reality or a virtual reality in your in your virtual live training session, you're going to be like you're back in the stone ages, right? I mean just kind of the way things are moving. So, you know, it's interesting how technology has really helped us move along that virtual live training curve. And I think it's just gonna continue. We're gonna hit that, that kind of hockey, hockey stick kind of move um, in the next five years. I know we've been talking about it for 15 years, right? That everything is gonna go virtual and everything is gonna go online, but point now where um, it's just going to be easy to use and it's going to be kind of second nature and we're going to have people that kind of come into learning and development with building for the virtual live uh, uh, environment instead of building for the brick and mortar you know the face-to-face -face environment so I'm really excited about where things are going uh, with the industry over the next five or ten years yeah oh absolutely me too Oh my gosh. And I can't, Kim, I think, can't believe you dropped that. I'm totally psyched for ready player one. Sorry. Total, <laughs> total, uh, total distraction, but I'm a huge fan. If you guys have not read the book or uh, listened to the audio book, Oh my gosh, it's fantastic. So, uh, yeah, it, um, I can't wait for that version of reality to, to come around, but I think we're probably a, a couple decades away from, uh, from that. Uh, but, Anyways, yes, a work outing to watch the movie. Definitely, <laughs> definitely, definitely. I mean, everybody, everybody was all hyped up for the new Star Wars coming out, but I was, I, I'm way more excited for Ready Player One, and I sure as heck hope they don't ruin it. I'm, uh, uh, I'm looking forward to it, and I think it's probably just because I'm a, I'm a product of the '80s, and so all of the '80s pop culture references uh very you know rung true for me very strongly so <laughs> anyways hey we're at that 30 minute mark so i'm going to take a quick break uh interesting transition there for sure but um dan take some time to jump into the chat if you want or scroll back if you need to and maybe check it out see if we missed any uh good questions or uh any conversations that we can be sure to um touch base on later and while you're doing that i'll be sure to remind everybody uh, to continue to throw some questions into the Q and A, we've still got some in there. Vote the ones up if you uh, if you see one that you really want us to cover uh, or to talk about. Go ahead and uh, click the vote button 
for it. Also, uh, with 30 minutes left, that's a lot of conversation time, folks. So hit up that share button and tell all your friends that there's still plenty of time to hang out and to talk about virtual uh, virtual live training. And, uh, you know, with Dan Bacchius from Air Class. Your colleagues, your managers, your subordinates, everybody that you hang out with, that um, we're actually fun people. Not, and even according to Twitter, uh, and Kara, thank you for uh, starting that crazy stream of consciousness uh, yesterday. But uh, I hope your friend wasn't uh, too scared away by the GIF madness uh, online. But um, thanks, everybody, for engaging and making, I think his name was Kyle, making Kyle feel welcome. Uh, in our, our crazy little uh, community of professionals that we have here. Anyways, be sure to check out membership. Again, tldc.us slash membership. Become a member today and get a discount on the event coming up at the end of the month, TLDC 18 in beautiful, lovely Phoenix, Arizona. You will not regret it. The uh, The program is is definitely going to be something that you're not going to find anyplace else the depth of conversations that you will be able to have because it is a smaller event and we, we do that by design uh, will will be much better than anything that you've uh, experienced in one of the larger events where there's thousands and thousands of people and you maybe have a couple good hallway conversations here and there but you mostly just collect a bunch of business cards uh, we like to pride ourselves on making sure that everybody connects very deeply and um, and gets to know everybody else within the community and help to build a, a strong support group for everybody that's doing the work of training and learning and development in whatever form that may be. If you are working in virtual live instructor-led training, if you're an e-learning developer, if you're an instructional designer purist, if you're a CLO, if you're just a training manager, you know, any of the different roles that exist in our field, um, you know, this, it's a great event. It's a great group of folks. Um, and we can help everybody be better. One of the things, let me just do, um, besides pointing out the fact that we have the Slack channel, I don't want to miss all the things in my list that Craig so diligently wrote up for me. Um, uh, be sure to hit up the Slack channel. We have 24 seven conversations going on there as well. Um, but let me just take a minute to, explain to everybody kind of what we're trying to do. Also, one of the side benefits of TLDC is the connection we're really trying to make between enterprise. So the industry, um, those people who are looking for full-time employees and maybe looking to uh, find some contractors, maybe you guys have a lot of work being kicked off in 2018 uh, within your company and there just aren't enough internal resources to deal with them and you're you're looking to build up your pool or refresh your pool of contractors that you reach out to we want to be that um, pool for you and so we also want to support you consultants and folks that may just be out of work right now or maybe you want to move on from your current job and you want to find another job we want to be a very um, a very close knit uh, clearinghouse or matchmaking service, however you want to define it, um, and help people find the best companies that are doing some really cool work and find new full time jobs if that's what you're looking for. If you're a manager, you're looking to fill a full time position or get a contractor, find some of the best people. We can help you identify who's who and who's in your neighborhood, uh, who's in the same state that you can even look to. We can help reduce that hiring cycle for you by letting you know. Um, you know, who's new to the industry, who's been around a really long time. And, and um, you know, through a collaborative community effort, we can help everybody be more productive, be uh, more effective in the role that they're currently in, and really just help everybody move through their uh, careers. So if you are, if you are looking um, we are, we're doing or more managing all of that through the membership service. So that's one of the benefits of being a member of the TLDC community is, um, is hanging out with us and having those members only conversation and getting, uh, access to those companies that are hiring those consultant firms. They're looking for more consultants, all of that. We want to help uh, everybody get better. This is sort of that incremental way of us 
moving the needle in the industry, right? We talk a lot about in other associations or other communities, Jerry, we want to have an impact on the industry. There are a lot of people out there pontificating about why the industry should change, how the industry should change. You know, we, we should be doing this or, you know, the classic, we need to, right? We hear that all the time, uh, you know, and uh, as a whole, that's great. And we need to talk about those things and talk about where the industry should be going and all that kind of stuff. But the only way we get there is by getting the right people with the right ideas and the right work ethic and the abilities into the right companies to influence and to be able to do that kind of work. And we also need to find and identify those companies that are willing to change what they're doing to turn into a 21st century learning model to take on new tools like air class and and others that are out there and start to make those shifts and be willing to hire somebody that has those new 21st century skill sets and not just continue doing the same old same old so um so that's one of the um one of the absolute benefits of being a member and we're working really hard to um to make that happen for everybody so uh, let me know if you have any tips, if you know any companies that are hiring that you really respect and that you would not be um, afraid to share with. But that same token, if you know of companies that you think people should avoid, um, we want to start that sort of blacklist as well uh, so that we know uh, where, you know, it's where it is safe and OK to work and where it may not be. So those are all members only things that we love to talk about and that we want to really ramp up and give you guys some career benefits and really make that membership, uh, those dollars you put towards that uh, really worthwhile and valuable. So uh, that was a long break today. I apologize, folks, but I really wanted to get that out there and share it with you because I don't think we, um, Luis and I have talked too much openly about uh, our efforts and our desire to do that. I know Mel Milloway jumped into the TLD chat uh, in Slack and said she had a job opportunity and she wasn't too sure where to put it um, in there. And so um, it just kind of sparked this idea that we need. And, um, you know, is to, to, you know, figure this stuff out and to, and to talk it through. So, yeah. And I, and, uh, and Toddy, yeah, I never, <laughs> never thought about our group as a place to blacklist the crazy places, but yeah, I mean, I think it's important. Right. And I think a lot of times, um, one person's crazy place may be another person's haven and they may, you know, do really, really well there. So, um, I don't want us to be, um, you know, I don't want us to be really hardcore about this, right? About, especially about, you know, the blacklist idea, you know, I, uh, um, I, I just, you know, it, I just want to be able to raise flags to everybody and let everybody make their own decisions and, you know, be able to say, you know, this is, we've had some people have some negative experiences with this particular company or, you know, working on this particular project or, or whatnot. So, you know, go in with your eyes wide open, basically. So pluses and minuses. Yes. So excellent. Yes. Thank you. So anyways, that's where we're at there. So anyways, let's get back to our great conversation with Dan Bacchius from air class. Uh, it's some great virtual training stuff. Well, I'll, um, while we're starting that conversation back up, um, who in the chat, why don't you let us know if, uh, if you actively do uh, virtual instructor led training or if you design for it or uh, anything like that, uh, let us know. And um, it would be interesting to get your take on it. So, Dan, let's jump in here real quick. Boy, I'm trying to figure out why my mouse isn't cooperating with me here. But uh, there we go. Okay, now I got you back. All right. Sam, you're doing virtual ILT? I did not know this. Kara's launching some virtual ILT in Q2. Fantastic. Toddy's consulting on a virtual rollout. Awesome. And Dr. Lassoff, you are always just doing stranger things than everybody else. So you don't, you don't count. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding, Mark. I love you, man. 
<laughs> you crack me up. Oh, man. Anyways. All right, cool. I'm off the rails. Sorry. Here we go. Uh, back to the questions. Candace, we've got two votes for Candace's question coming up. Where did you hone your virtual craft? Do you recommend any particular training or certification programs? I would say he honed his craft with those middle schoolers, but there's they're, they're probably not looking for that answer. <laughs> oh, I can't hear you. No, rats. Nope, still can't hear you. Okay, Just there we go. Headsets? How about that? All right. There we For some go. Reason, now my I headset's being a little finicky. It doesn't want to, me to unmute. So I guess that, you know, we're just going to have to call it there for a little bit. Um, <laughs> no. Uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> no, that's that, where did I hone my craft? I honed my craft when uh, uh, basically my verse, first virtual experience was when I was wor working for the data storage company uh, back in, uh, in 08, right? Um, when, of course, everything shrunk. And uh, we went from having... Um, let's see, we were doing approximately globally uh, somewhere around uh, about 50 face-to-face -face classes a week, right? Um, we went from doing that per week um, to to bring 80% of those into virtual classes. And this is where I did everything that was uh, possibly you could do wrong in a virtual environment um, and what I would suggest to people to never do again. So, um you know, so so what we did is, you know, just because of the time crunch, it was like, well, hey, we still have to deliver this content. You know, we still have to train these people. We don't have any money, right? Nobody can travel. How are we going to do it? So it was like, okay. So we take, you know, what we had a, again at that point in time, I think it was just, you know, we had straight up WebEx, right? Um, started using WebEx for yeah. our conferencing, our conferencing tool. Um, and what we did, and this is something I would, for people, there's a couple of people who were asking about, hey, what do you do when you first start going virtual? Um, what we did is the worst thing I think that you can do when you go virtual. We went where a face-to-face -face instructor was in front of the classroom, had about 10 students in the class, right? And then we had, you know, another 10 students that were dialing in. We had a camera set up. You know, we had some, you know, conferencing speaker in the middle, that kind of thing. And it was, for the online people, it was the worst experience they could possibly ever have, right? Because as the instructor, you have a class in front of you, that's what your focus is on, right? Not the virtual students. So, right. you know, unless they stood up on their, you know, they're basically on their virtual desks and yelled, they never got their questions answered. They were never part of the conversation. Um, and so it was just, it was, it was a horrible way to do it. Um, and but it was, it was the only thing that, that we had available to us at that point in time, right? Um, and that's why. Right. Everybody was yeah. learning back then, right? Every, everybody was trying to figure out what, how the heck do we deal with this and what, you know, what are yeah. some of the pitfalls and everything. And I think we've all experienced them in one yeah. flavor or another. Yeah, and, the, the, and so, you know, we, we quickly realized, and that's why I think why I'm such an advocate for have some good content. Because we quickly realized that, you know, one, not only is it the your delivery mode that's important, but, you know, making sure that your content is fitting that delivery mode. Because um, we didn't do that either. We just took that three-day class and we did eight hours of, you know, virtual live training uh, the same way that we did the virtual live class. And, of course, you know, people went through the class. These were is high, pretty highly technical groups, right? So, you know, they were probably off reading on the side while somebody like me was pontificating. They didn't really care. They got done. They took the certification. They knew their information, you know, and they, they went on and we said, oh, hey, yeah. it was a success. But it was it was a horrible failure is what it was. It could have been it, that, those eight hours probably could have been crunched down for most of those folks into, you know, one yeah. or two at yeah. best. Right. And, and especially now and, and kind of, as you said, right, we're we're getting I, I hope you know, we're getting a lot smarter with how we're doing our, our virtual live training. And so, you know, the way I would suggest to that same company now after the experience and, and kind of where we're at with technology is, hey, let's take that, yeah, like you said, the eight hours of training. Let's go ahead and let's look at that content and say, hey, how much of that can we do as as web-based training, right? And let's let's do some video, let's do some, sort that out there ahead of time. Let's make that virtual live session much more interactive and let's do it so that way people are actually involved and there's some learning that's going on, right? Not just not just information transfer. So so I think that's that's one of the big things that that 
I would suggest anybody who's starting is, is one, get your content right first. And then at that point, um, yeah. then at that point, figure out how to, you know, be a better instructor, that kind of thing. Because from my perspective, I look at it as you build content for a virtual environment. It's a lot easier to take that virtual content and flip it over to a face-to-face environment if you need to, because that's a piece of cake then. You already got your your 15-minute breaks are already built into your content, right? You already have interactivity built right. in. It's like it's a piece of cake to move to a face-to-face content after it's been built virtually. So start virtually and then move to face-to-face if you need to. It's an interesting point because um, it, to... You know, a lot of times we we say even for face to face design, right? We say interactivity is what you need to be doing. But people are like, ah, eh, you know, I can just do that on the fly, or I can just wing it. And so you never, it's never really designed into it. And then it ends up being the instructor just talking for the whole entire hour or the two hours or whatever. But you're right. I mean, if you're forced to do those activities and to define all those because you're designing for the virtual side first, then you've got it all ready to go. If you do end up going face to face, that's a great way to look at it. And I want to make sure, I think Kara threw in there uh, something about needing to get the questions answered virtually. That sounds familiar. So are we answering all the questions that you guys have? (laughs) (laughs) Touche, touche. Uh, Yeah. So we did the honing of the craft. All right. So here we go. Um, why are we seeing more companies move to a virtual live delivery format? We think we talked about that, didn't we? Yeah, I think. It, I mean, money. Yeah, is exactly. A big we one. can break that uh, down to you know, basically three things, right? Budget is kind of the big thing. People aren't going to be able to travel. It's going to be time is another one, and again, that ties back into traveling, but it also ties into a little bit of the um, learning and development team themselves. Um, you know, cause what, what's happening is in a lot of cases, customer, you know, their, their teams are getting smaller, but yet they're still expected to deliver as many hours of training. How are you going to be able to pull that off? Right. So, you know, that's another thing that's moving people virtually. Yeah. Um, and then just the number of, of trainings that are expected to be delivered in that time frame. Um, you know, so, so the main pressures I hear from people, you know, it's budget time and then the volume. Yeah. Perfect. Love that answer. And it, it is, it, it's all, uh, all three, but sometimes one is a bigger lever within the, within the enterprise than some of the others. More often than not, it's that money yep. side of it. <laughs> yep, exactly. <laughs> right. Okay. Here we go. Where do you think the industry is on the virtual classroom implementation curve? Yeah. You know, and we kind of touched on this a little bit. I think like I said, I think we're 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 getting onto the point where we're starting to see some improvements, and I think we're starting to be able to deliver on the concepts that people had, you know, 12, 10, 12 years ago, right? The idea of hey, we can we can move everything virtual. Yeah. We're starting to get enough technology and enough knowledge around how people learn um, and how best to v- deliver virtually that we're starting to kind of move up that curve a little bit. And I think, like I said earlier, you know, in the next, you know, five to 10 years, it's going to be real impressive to see how things change. I, you know, that's what I think we're going to see that, that shift. Uh, and I'm hoping we see that mind shift go from the face to face to more of a hundred percent virtual environment. Yeah. It'll, it'll really be interesting to see, I think where the technology goes with, you know, with, with these types of solutions that need to happen, quite frankly. I mean, do we, is the next step where we do all go into a virtual space? Like I would consider this kind of a, a virtual space, but it's certainly not mm-hmm. 3D. So are we all going to put glasses on and be represented like mm-hmm. avatars in a space? And you and I could like walk around and like shake virtual exactly. hands. I could and, drop the 15 and, pounds and, I put and, on over Christmas and look just awesome, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I think that's a great idea. Right, right, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I I knew somebody would drop Second Life in there. I was uh, I was a I was a big big proponent, big fan, big user of Second Life when it first uh, came out. That it was that was going to be the catalyst that was going to push us into that sort of you know virtual avatar ish kind of space, and uh, it was it took off in weird ways, <laughs> <laughs> but didn't really get much traction in our world. And it was, um, you know, kind of like the first iteration in the mid nineties of virtual reality, right? It kind of popped. It was a big deal. And then it kind of died off and now it's big again. 
I'm wondering if maybe Second Life's going to have a resurgence too. It's it's always a possibility. <laughs> you just never know. Yeah, IBM was really big in Second Life. They seriously were. They had a whole um, island, and um, there were a couple companies that really went all in on Second Life for for training, for new hire orientation, all that kind of stuff. Wells Fargo had uh, a Wells Fargo island. Um, to try to teach people about, um, you know, finances and all that kind of stuff. I mean, it's, uh, you know, people, people really jumped all in on that. But then, then, you know, it just, like I said, it just died. Sadly, I had a great avatar and everything. <laughs> <laughs> all right. No more distractions. I'm going to crank right. through these questions. Uh, Kim, Kim wants to know where would a training manager begin with virtual instructor led training? If they are at a new startup with no L and D history at all, the marketing manager, who's also taking on a training role, what questions need to be asked first, multiple audiences, multiple types of training, sales systems, et cetera. Whew, that's that is, a big question. That's a big Kim. question. So, so how do you want to break that down? Maybe, maybe the, the, the uh, quick answer would be, Kim, if you have the money, hire a vendor. <laughs> um, but uh, but no, no. In, in all reality, I think I think the thing that you have to do first, and, and depending on the level of experience you have, and it sounds like you know you're just kind of delving into things. Um, I think I would almost go back to 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 what I mentioned earlier. Look at how you can start building some of your content in a virtual style, virtual fashion. And, and I think somebody, somebody else uh, threw in there, like micro learning was one of the things that were thrown out, you know, modules, you know, building your content in a modular fashion. I mean, it's, it's a challenge to do that. But if you go in with the mindset, um, kind of initially that that's how you're going to do it, it's easier than trying to take something that's been built straight out and then try to try to make that into a modular set. So, um, I would start with the content. I'm a, I'm a big content person. I would start with the content first, um, figure out how you can, you know, think about your delivery um, after you've said, hey, here's how I want to build my content. Here's how I'm going to deliver it. They, they go hand in hand. It's a toss up. Um, I also threw out, uh, I think, and I mentioned that um, uh, a book that I use, uh, one of the presenters I use is uh, it's called Cindy Huggett. Um, she's a, kind of an industry leader around the virtual training space. Yeah, she's yep. great. And she has a couple books out. And so, you know, she, and she has ones that are kind of really hands-on, gives a lot of templates, um, a lot of suggestions on tools of how to kind of get things rolling and build some content. So, so she's, uh, that's a good reference there too. Yeah. And my, my answer to this, Kim, and to your colleague, um, uh, first of all, reach out to your colleague and tell your colleague that she doesn't have to funnel questions through you. She should just show up and be a part of the TLDC community. Come on. Jeez, these ATD people think that they just can't, they can't possibly share themselves with other communities. Uh, jump in, everybody. I say, it doesn't matter. Hey, I'm a big fan of ATD. You know, they do good stuff. Why not? They're the, they're the, they're the biggest uh, community out there as far as our industry is concerned. So, you know, they do good stuff for sure. It's a big, uh, it's a big place to be, but uh, you know, you don't have to devote all your time just to ATD. I like to think we're pretty cool too, but anyways, I digress. Um, the um, so Kim, to to your point, you know me. Uh, I'm I'm into the iterative side of things, right? I would say if anybody is just starting off in this space, pick some low hanging fruit, right? Pick a pick a topic or pick a course that you do um, that's short, right? And just try a new tool like Air Class or. Uh, you know, whatever tool you've got, you know, it doesn't, it could be whatever, you know, use basically this, that's one of my other, you know, rules that I like to follow, right? Run what you brung, right? If you ever been to the, uh, the drag strip on bring your own car day, right? They call it run what you brung. So if you've already got some technology in the house, run what you brung, man, and go ahead and use that tech and jump in and then it just do it. Just start, do a class. And even if it's really bad, you know, you, th then, you know, you learn from that, uh, you know, that bad experience. Of course you torture a few people yeah. along the way, but you know, you use that feedback to make better decisions and do it better again the next time. And if you let people know that, Hey, this is an experiment, this is an experimental course. Anybody that's interested in helping us refine how we do this, 
we'd love to have you sign up for the class. You know, there's, there's lots of different ways. I think that, I think people get, um, I, I think people get a little bit too hung up on needing to do it right. Right. They buy all the books, right. Talk to all the professionals, get all the right software, you know, and, and, and try to, that, it's got to be perfect. Like right out the shoot, it's just got to be right on the money. And, um, I think doing it and quickly and just getting started, um, the beats that perfection process every time. Now, that's just me though on my soapbox. So I'll yeah. jump down. No, there. and it's a valid point too, because especially when we, you know, it sounds like in, in the scenario we we're talking about here, it's a relatively new startup company, not kind of an established already learning and development group or an expectation of how they're going to be trained. And so really, it's a great opportunity for you to do exactly that. Be just like, hey, you know, we're just getting things rolling, right? We're just, we're building this. I'm doing the best I can for learning and development. Let's do, let's, you know, build some content. Let's, let's figure out how we want to best deliver that content. And I think there was another comment in there too, about the idea of make sure that you're pairing your content development with your delivery method. And that's, yeah, absolutely. Totally agree with that. And, you know, and so, you know, when I was saying, yeah, build VILT, my assumption was it's going to be delivered VILT, but, but, you know, you need to kind of work those out. But the idea of every time that you go out to your, your audience, right. You know, make sure that you're doing that test balloon, that you're piloting that first and saying, and, and go small. And then you'll get some really great feedback from people and then you build on that and, and drive it forward. So, so yeah, I, you know, don't be afraid to, to start, um, just keep it small. So that way you, you, you lose big, lose small, win big, something like that, I think is the, uh, you know. Yeah. Yeah. I think I've heard that saying before, right. The, uh, the little, yep. uh, little losses or whatnot. Uh, but, uh, anyways, uh, yes. And Dana and Kara, thank you. You're far too kind. Um, and Paul, Paul, good to see you, man. Paul, is your video studio done yet? It being Friday and all, every time I think about video Friday, I'm like, when is Paul going to be on and be a guest and show us his cool new studio? One of these days, I'm going to keep the thumb screws on you, man. I'm keep the pressure coming at you. But anyways, I digress and it makes for the perfect timing for this last session. We got about two minutes before the top of the hour. Um, but Kim says, how does air class help the instructor deal with participants who might leave the group <laughs> off on tangents? Or down the rabbit hole? Yeah, no, that's a, that's a good question. So, um, uh, there's, <laughs> excuse me. Um, so basically you have a couple options, right? So one is you can just kind of do the cold, hard, shut them down and just mute them, right? Keep them off to the side. Um, we're also, cause we actually, some of our customers are K-12 online schools. And one of the requests that we never really thought about, but actually came from them was, can we kick a student out of class? Um, you know, because in the corporate environment, right, you usually don't do that. You use other tactics to kind of, you know, but uh, so that is something that we're building in air class. So if you get somebody who, who is totally taking it offline and, and uh, you know, take them on the, you can take them out in the woodshed and, uh, you know, kick them out the, uh, kick them out of the class if you need to. Um, that's something that we're looking at, looking at adding. Yeah. Adding. No, yeah. I think it's a, I think it's a good digital instructor skill set that we need to be training people on for the future. All right. Uh, learning, learning how to manage you crazies in the chat room. Always trying to take me off track. Jeez. <laughs> appreciate that. Hey, anyways, you know what? We're one minute away from the top of the hour and I, gosh, darn it. I should have tried to slow us down a little bit sooner, but such a great conversation, Dan. Oh, it's Thanks my pleasure. Uh, it today. was great to get some input from people and, uh, and see some of their thoughts and, uh, and sides. And I hope I got all the questions answered. And, uh, if not, feel free to, to reach out to me. Um, basically you can, you can get me just at, uh, uh my email is dbeckius at lenovo.com. Um, or I'm on LinkedIn. I'm happy to join with anybody on LinkedIn also. And so, you know, feel free to, feel free to touch base. Yeah, absolutely. And you know what, jump yeah. in and join our Slack group too. Uh, you know, hang out there and you can do, uh, maybe answer some questions, uh, you know, inside that space as well. If people have other, uh, um, other questions for you along those lines, but, uh, we would love to have you as part of our community. If you, uh, absolutely. are so inclined to hang out with yeah, us on a regular absolutely. basis. I've been, I've saw some of the re the, the replays yeah. and I'm, I'm definitely interested in jumping in. So I appreciate you guys giving me the time.
Yeah, yeah, no worries. Yeah, and so and talk to your manager too, and tell them that we still have some vendor spots open for TLDC eighteen if they're interested in being a sponsor and and sending you to that hang out. That would be good. And actually, Arizona. my marketing one of my marketing people is on the call now, so the wheels turning. All right, good. So, dear <laughs> marketing, we love you guys. Uh, come hang out with us in Arizona. And uh, we'll give you, we'll, we'll show you all sorts of love. That's right. That? <laughs> Good stuff. Well, again, thank you so much. I'm going to just do some closing remarks here, but all I'm right. going to close Thanks, down guys. the video for now. So uh, thank, yep. thank you. All right, everybody. Hey, that's another video Friday in the can. Actually, that's the first, today's the first video Friday of 2018. And we didn't even talk too much about video, except virtual instructor led training is uh, all about video. We didn't geek out on it too much like we'd normally do on Fridays, but um, I promised Sam that we, going forward, we're going to try to stay really focused on Fridays and um, and geek out and get back to our old school ways of doing some uh, some video stuff and being pretty hardcore about that. We can get Matt Pierce back on from TechSmith and all that. Yeah, Sam's in the chat also. Um, is a form of video, <laughs> I know. Sort of a form of video, right, Sam? I mean, I kind of got that right. I don't know. <laughs> Man, great. <clears throat> Thanks for hanging out, everybody. This has been a fun day as well as all of the other days. Uh, it's a great way for me to start my day every single day here on uh, TLDC, hanging out with you guys Monday through Friday, 8 a.m. Pacific time, 11 a.m. Eastern time, and 4 p.m. UK time. Thank you guys so much for talking. Virtual instructor-led classrooms. We haven't had a chance to talk about that much in a while. That has not been a topic that we've hit on uh, I think in quite some time. So it was definitely fun to have Dan on from air class. We really appreciate uh, him taking some time and hanging out with us and uh, being a part of um, the TLDC community. We really appreciate that. And, um, uh, and uh, dear marketing person of air class, feel free to reach out Brent at the TLDC.com or Luis at the TLDC.com. Let us know if you're interested in, uh, uh, sponsoring anything that we do here at TLDC, TLD cast or uh, TLDC 18 be tons of fun. And uh, we'd love to connect with you guys and uh, help you spread the word. So uh, anyways, everybody, what a fantastic day. Hope everybody has a great weekend. Everybody on the East coast, stay warm and uh, stay off the roads, bundle up and just, um, you know, Enjoy some virtual professional development and uh, stay in the house and just know that the end of the month is coming and you'll be in Arizona very soon where it is beautiful and warm all the time. So keep that in your mind as you go out today into the freezing cold tundra of wherever you're from. We'll talk to you all later. Everybody have a great day. Adios. Bye, 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 no, 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 no.